When we get to reaction stoichiometry, we can do really similar things um, in solution that we just do with grams and molar masses, except we also have molarities. Uh, so a problem like this says, calculate the molar or the mass of silver sulfide produced when uh, silver nitrate is added to sodium sulfide. So let's get a balanced equation really quick. Um, we get silver sulfide and sodium nitrate. Uh, we're going to need two of those, and we'll get two of those. So, um, 0.125 liters, 125 milliliters of solution, and we have a 0.2 molar solution of silver nitrate. Since we don't have limiting and excess reactants, we can just worry about our one um, chemical. We know that there are two moles of silver nitrate in every one mole of silver sulfide. And the molar mass of silver sulfide is 247.18, 81, sorry. So there's nothing preventing us from doing this if our question is simply, how much can I make? I'm starting with a solution instead of grams because I have volumes and molarities, but the same, same logic applies. Um, how much can I make with my one ingredient? Um, the problem comes when we have multiple ingredients and dissociation. Um, because not every ion is not in the reaction. Some of them are spectators and they don't actually react. Um, which we kind of ignore in the last problem because we're only focused on the solid, which is the things that react. Um, so we need to classify ions. This is really important. We have a limiting and excess reactant ion, and we also have spectators because the question uh, that arises like this is not only what mass can I make from these two chemicals, so now I have to worry about both of them, it's also what ions, each individual ion is left over and why. So for a problem like this, it's, uh, we have volume changes and dissociation. It's going to help us a lot to keep track of the molecules individually, or each ion individually. So let's, let's get everything into moles. Since we have volume changes, we'll worry about the volumes later. Um, our iron hydroxide is 0 0.035 liters, and we have... 0.25 molar. 0 0.00875 moles. Now this is moles of iron, um, iron nitrate. I'm sorry, that should say nitrate in there. Iron nitrate. Iron hydroxide is our product. This is moles of iron nitrate. We are going to need to split that up. There are three nitrates there and one iron. So we're going to pay attention to that later. Potassium hydroxide, 55 milliliters, 0.055 liters. Uh, and that gives me 0 0.0099 moles of KOH. And since that's a one-to-one -one ratio, that is both the potassium and the hydroxide separately. Our net ionic equation, since we're really only focused on the iron hydroxide, our net ionic equation for that is going to be Fe3 plus plus 3 hydroxides makes FeOH3 solid. That means my potassium and my nitrate are spectators. So let's handle those a little differently. Okay, so here's our spectator work. So while the spectators aren't actually doing anything, their volume is changing. So my potassium, um, we had 0 0.0099 moles, and now we have a new volume. Uh, the total volume is 90 milliliters. So my potassium concentration 
is, we put the brackets there to designate concentration, 0 0.11 molar potassium. The nitrate is a little trickier here. Remember we said it dissociates three times, so the 0 0.00875 was the iron nitrate. Our nitrate is 0 0.00875 times 3, because there are three of those in iron nitrate. So those are the moles. Um, you don't need to show that. You could just triple it and put it in there. That's totally fine. Still 90 milliliters. And our nitrate concentration is 0 0.29 molar. So we have two of them already. The spectators, they have volume changes. We need to keep track of those. All right. Okay. The net ionic equation, though, when we get into it here, actually has a reaction and volume changes. So we're going to do our same um, limiting reactant chart that we learned before. Now this is all in moles, so we'll get our volume changes at the end. We had 0 0.00875 moles of iron and 0 0.0099 moles of hydroxide. Since it's a 3 to 1 ratio, our hydroxide is going to go away to 0 first. That'll be our limiting reactant. So we have no hydroxide. And sometimes that is worth stating. The hydroxide concentration is zero molarity. Since this had a coefficient of three, so this is like a three X here, my X value when I reduce that is going to be for the change column a third, so 0 0.0033. So that's where we're gonna get our change here for the iron is minus 0 0.0033 and the iron is going to be plus 0 0.0033 because both of those coefficients are 1. We work that out and we can see so now that gives me um, iron of 0 0.00545 moles and my iron hydroxide is, since I started out at 0, 0 0.0033 now, this is a solid, so we are going to convert that to grams. So 0 0.0033 moles of iron hydroxide. And we know that every one mole is 106.48 grams. And we're getting um, about 3.5 grams, 3.5 53 grams of iron hydroxide. But the iron over here is a solution. So my last calculation here is my excess ion. My limiting ion was zero molarity. My spectators are 0.1 and 0.29. That's the potassium and the nitrate. My excess ion has some leftovers 0.00545, because some of it reacted. And now I still have a 90 milliliter solution, so 0 0.09 liters. So my iron concentration is 0 0.061 molar. And that's how we get every individual ion. We classify them. We have spectators. A limiting reactant, which goes to zero. An excess reactant, so some of it goes away. And these are all in moles. And then I can get moles of my product and convert it over to grams. So careful uh, bookkeeping and calculations and classifying every little ion, watching out for the dissociation, remembering we had, oh, there's three nitrates. That affects the moles. Uh, this is a three-to-one ratio. Which one's going to go to zero? There's care very careful um, analysis that goes into this big problem.